Hello friends. Oh my goodness, we haven't had a chit chat in a while. And I've been busy and I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Today is the 9th, Friday, the 9th of August. And my husband's back for oh three days now, so he'll leave out on Sunday. And oh my goodness, have I been busy. Today I had seven grandbabies all here at the same time arranging from ranging from nine down to two months i'm pooped <laughs> but i love it i love it everything's doing good outside i haven't done a walk around i have been so busy the porch is done but we were so busy with it there was no way we could have filmed it Absolutely not. I did do a, a few little segments on it, but I didn't even edit it and put it up because it was it was hard. It, it was hard, and we had a, quite a big job. But I'll show you how it looks. We're almost done with it. We we poured it all. Everything's good, but now we have. Ouch! Was on my chair. Now we have. Um, like three low spots and one is a rather large size dip with the water a low spot so we're gonna get some more cement and just mix it up you know kind of soupy and spread it around on those low spots and then it should be good we should be all done with it then and I'm thinking that because it's a nice size it's like eight and a half by nine and a half so it's a good size and so you could, you know, say nine by 10, make it easy. Anyway, I think I'm gonna put, my husband told me last night when he came home, he said he loved it first off and it looked really nice. Considering Dave, that sweetheart and I, it's the first time we ever did cement and we did this job together. And he had a brilliant idea and it worked out fantastic. So my husband liked it and he said, you know what you should do is on each side of that, um, patio, porch, whatever you want to call it, he wants me to build a raised bed. Or he wants to build raised, raised beds. So I have a raised bed on each side of it. I think that would look so pretty. I, yeah, it would look really nice. But, um, oh my gosh, my gardens are doing fantastic too. Um, it's kind of cool where we, we tore all those sidewalks out from in front of there. But those sidewalks, there used to be a house over there, and it was probably built right around the same time this one was. My house was built right around the late 1800s. So there was a sidewalk that went to the garage, and in fact, that's why we bought that property, because where the property line is, it was a horseshoe drive. So it makes me think that one point in time, it was either a shared driveway or it was all one property. I'm, I'm not sure. But it was a horseshoe drive that goes through the middle of the two properties. And uh, if if you looked right down that, that property line, we would have only had, if somebody else was to buy that property, we would have only had like a quarter of our driveway. And there's no way. So my husband told me, oh, we bought that about four years ago, I want to say, four Four years ago he says get to the bank and buy that we can't let nobody else buy that property because we won't have a driveway and it'll eat up you know a lot of our property that we use so that's what we did we bought that we we spent all that time clearing it out and we finally got it all cleaned and you know we got the greenhouse up we got the gardens and we're working now we're working on getting the uh, hole filled in with dirt that's a job Hey, did you guys watch that video on uh, my Haymaker's Punch? That's what I'm drinking, by the way. Fantastic stuff. Watch that video and give it a try. You probably will like it. It's good. But uh, the sidewalks that we took out of there, um, there's two more chunks that are stuck, that are still on the ground, but they're under my raised bed, so they can't be moved yet. What you need? My phone's ringing? Let it ring. My phone's been ringing off the hook. 
I've been so busy. And then I went to, uh, my friend Dave lives in Lake City. And when, when we took him back over there with his tractor and his trailer, he said, hey, I got a place I'm going to take you to. And it was that Amish store. And yes, friends, I could go berserk in there. Absolutely. I couldn't believe all the groceries I got for 60 bucks. All that food. And I said to my husband, I told him as soon as I got home, I called him on the phone. I, could, I was so excited to tell him the deals that I found there. And I know a few of you had told me that you've been there and you love that store. My gosh, you could get addicted to that place. I would be in trouble if I lived next door to it. That I'd have to put an addition on for my pantry. But that that's a good place. And there's a lot of you that said you have Amish stores around, but they're not very inexpensive. Boy, I'm sorry. I know when I used to go down to Shipsawana, and I'm trying to think of the name of that place, if it was Ian L or Ian, I think it was Ian L. It was a bulk food place, and it was an Amish bulk food store. I absolutely love that place. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. It's so dry out. The allergy, my allergies are getting to me. Anyway, the bulk food place down in Chipsawana is wonderful. I haven't been there in years. But, but I'd sure love to go there. Yes, friends, I could go take a nap. Oh my goodness, I am wore right out. I have had, and I didn't really get that many videos up in the last, what, 10, 11 days? I've just been so busy doing all kinds of stuff, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do a pantry chit-chat and bring you up to speed. Yes, I'm still dehydrating. I got my dehydrator going. That poor thing's on, been on working overtime since, since I've started. Now I'm drying some herbs in there. And I should do a video because I dry a lot of my herbs, and then I use them in my, you know, my spice blends and stuff. But I've got a lot of stuff that I dry. And uh, the chickens are all doing good. I'm up to six eggs a day now. Yeah, you really should try that haymaker's punch. That's good stuff. I lost one hen. You all know that. I told you that. I think she just had a heart attack. But uh, I also lost one, two, three of my squash plants to the squash vine borer. I didn't catch them in time. The rest of them, I believe they're okay because I had diatomaceous earth sprinkled all around in there. So that will kill anything that crawls through it. And uh, But those ones I didn't. I didn't get to them in time. So I lost three of them, which is fine because I've got, oh my God, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got like 11, 12, a dozen squash plants going. Didn't hurt anything. My cucumbers are doing good. I think a couple of my cucumber plants are about done because they're starting to turn quite yellow now and uh, still producing. My Armenian yard-long cucumbers are fantastic. When I take you out there, I'll show them to you. They're wonderful. They get really long. And I picked one that was, oh my gosh, it was about a foot and a half long probably. And uh, no, I didn't get to taste it. My mother hiked it. <laughs> she took it home. She had that for her dinner. She said it was fantastic. Anyway, so I sent, I've i been giving stuff away. Oh my gosh. I've been, I can't even keep up dehydrating. I have got so much stuff this year. I think I grew enough for four families. But you all know I did the potatoes. And say even days after canning them. You don't see any starch, no icky, gooey starch in that jar. It's all clear. That's, watch that video. I'm doing potatoes. It'll be beautiful. See, because I'll show you. I'll show you the difference in that. And I'm so sorry. I got so much to talk to you about and tell you and bring you up to date on. I'm talking all over the board, and I'm sorry. These, see, here's the difference. These were parboiled. See how beautiful they are? Parboiled. These were raw packed. See that starch in the bottom? It looks gummy, ooey, gooey. 
yuck. It just doesn't look good at all. All you have to do is just rinse it after you open it. Rinse all that starch off those potatoes. They're perfectly fine. It's just not attractive, that's all. But I sliced them and I thought, boy, you know, I'll have a, I'll have a jar of mush if I parboil them. So I just raw packed them. And I got my, I did my pineapple. I did a video on that. I got a bunch of jams done. My granddaughters and I come through yesterday. They were here. And we washed walls in here. We washed all the jars down. We vacuumed all the cobwebs in the corners, every nook and cranny. We cleaned everything in here. Because I hadn't done that since... I usually like to come in here. Now I do come in here and check my jars, but I usually like to wipe them down at least once a month and keep it up, but I have not had any time since planting has started. So we come in here and give it a good once over, and that looks really nice. I've got all my squash that I've dehydrated. Look at a nice big uh, half gallon sized jar, and I still got tons more to do. Plus I've given a ton away to my family and my friends. So you have fresh squash too. This is the first year that I dehydrated cucumbers. And let me tell you, these are fantastic. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna leave them whole like this. I just stored them in the jar. I'm going to grind them, but not into a powder. I'm just going to like rough chop them, grind them to a, like a rough chop consistency for salads. And that would be good to put on your salads. The flavor is concentrated. They're wonderful. And uh, all the grandbabies are doing good. Little Cece, she's doing, she's such a good baby. When I have her and I have to go outside and I put her in her little stroller and she goes outside with me. But I keep her in when it's real hot or the sun's just blazing. I won't take her out of that. That's not good for her at all. Her little skin, she's so fair skin, she'd burn right up. But she's two months, a little over two months now. She'll be, she was born 23rd. So she's got till almost the end of the month before she's three months. And she's doing fantastic. Growing like a weed, my gosh, I can't believe how fast those grandbabies grow. It's like if you got grandbabies, enjoy them because they grow up so fast, so fast. But uh, everything else is, my. like I said, my husband's home. He is going to buy his truck in October. He, he made a plan to buy his truck in October. So, you know, I, and after, that's the other thing. After um, harvest and after I get done, you know, with my pantry and that, I'm going to take a week. Well, he's out for 11 days at a time, so I'm going to go out with him one of these days. So goodness who knows where i'll wind up at but it, it'll be fun to go out on a on a run with him you know and we'll be gone 11 days and i'll do a vlog and show you everywhere i've been and if i go anywhere that any of you know i know you i'll call you so maybe we can just meet up to get a hug or whatever but that'll be fun and uh I'm doing good stocking the pantry. I hope everybody's still stocking their pantry on a budget because, man, I sure hit a heck of a budget over there in Lake City. I've got all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to keep right on a stockpiling and adding to it. My jars over here, they're all pretty and clean and shiny. You can't see them, but I got them all nice and clean and wiped down. And it got hot in here. And it... It usually doesn't get that hot up here in Michigan. It just, we get warm, but, you know, what you guys think is cool up here in the north, we think is pretty hot. So 85 degrees is, to me, is almost sweltering. Where with you, it would be nice and uh, a relief down there in the south where it gets 110 degrees. But anyway, I was going to put the air conditioner in here because it got so hot in this room. Now, it's light in here now because when I film in here, I have the bright lights going. But it got so hot, two of my quart, tomato quart jars popped their lid. The, the seal broke and the lid popped from the heat. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's just going to go. I'm going to lose all my tomatoes. So I got it cooled down in here. 
I didn't get the the uh, air conditioning in the window, but I got air conditioning in the rest of my house, so I just turned the fan on and, you know, cooled it down in here somewhat. And I gave those tomatoes to the chickens, and they had a ball with them. But I'm having quite a summer, busy, and uh, I'm just having the time of my life with my garden. I just can't believe how fantastic it has been, but I put a lot of work into it, and they're beautiful. And my birdhouse gourds, now I'll do a walk around probably tomorrow, or maybe even later this evening, but that video won't go up for a couple days. But I'll do a walk around and I'll show you. Even my birdhouse gourds are doing fantastic. I have picked beans till they're coming out my ears. I've got already about mm, two and a half gallon bags that I froze because I've got a lot of beans that are still canned from last year and the year before. So these ones I'm freezing. And uh, they'll, I'll use the, the, the canned ones up too. So anyway, I got a lot of beans. And then I got my Hadista Shield figure beans. They're starting to, to produce like crazy. But those, I'm, I know you can use those for fresh or shelling. I'm going to keep those right on the vine. And I'm going to use those for shelling beans. Because that will give me some a nice winter supply of beans. And the other thing I got... It's down on this side. I got, and I always package them. I zip or I vacuum pack them. I got beans <coughs> at my local butcher. He had beans on sale there for seventy cents for a pound size bag, and there was three bags up there, so I grabbed all three of them. Seventy cents a piece, that is, and I brought those home and. I vacuum sealed them so they last even longer because I don't know exactly what I'm doing with them because I got my baked beans still that I did and I don't need to do any of those right away but if I do when I do more I'm definitely going to do um, Homestead Tessie's recipe and I did a video on that she nailed it when she did made those beans I don't know where she got that recipe from but bless her heart they're fantastic so that's the beans that I'll can, you know, every time I can beans. And I've gotten a few recipes that have come in from some of the subscribers out there, and I'm going to do videos on those. I have done a few videos on um, uh, product reviews, and Miss Mo was here. Those of you who know Miss Mo, bless her heart. She come and I give her all kinds of kale. I gave her all kinds of goodies out of the garden. And I, we always wind up in the pantry here. And I'm always giving her goodies out of the pantry. Because when I go to her house, it's the same thing. She does the same for me. But she was telling me that she was all upset because her vacuum sealer went kaput on her. And she had no idea what she was going to do. Because they're not cheap, you know. And um, I gave I gave the one that I did a review on. Remember the Sun Glyph one, uh, Sun Sun Glyph, uh, vacuum sealer that I did a review on. Well, friends, I gave that to Miss Mo so she could be able to, you know, take um, preserve her food or package package up her food and fill her freezer. So she's got that. I told her, I said, you don't need to buy one. I got an extra one because I do have my industrial one. And that little Sun Glyph. That was a handy little vacuum sealer. If any of you ordered from that, it's a good sealer. You, you won't be disappointed. Sometimes the bags, sometimes they're a little touchy to get the bags to seal, but you won't be disappointed. It was a good one. So, my grass hasn't been mowed in a while because it's just been so darn dry out. If you mow it, it's just going to burn it right up. So, it's it looks... Um, a little rough. My yard looks a little in disarray, but it's only because it's been so dry out. Now I got the sprinkler going on a lot of stuff out there now and getting everything watered. My husband's home with his boys, so they're visiting. I don't have any kids tomorrow, so that's why I said I might do the walk around tomorrow, maybe early in the morning. That'll be something. But anyway, there's a, there's a, a, a few things that I want to do. Um, 
I do have my email on my, my uh, channel. And my email is in each of my videos at the very bottom in the description box. And so is my snail mail. But I, I thought maybe, you know, we could do a, a question and answer segment or series. And uh, I'll do my best to, you can email me or snail mail me questions, whatever you want, anything you want to know within reason. And I will give you answers. We'll do a, you know, pantry chit chat and I'll do questions and answers. And uh, that would be kind of fun. I'm still going to do more canning, but you know, it's kind of in between. I do have um, a video that I'm going to do. And, oh, it's going to be neat. I found this recipe. I found a recipe for uh, stuffed banana peppers. Sounds fantastic. Of course, y'all know I love stuffed peppers. I make them every year for my lights going out. It's flickering. I make stuffed peppers every year and cabbage rolls for my freezer. I love them. Well, this recipe that I found for the banana peppers is fantastic. And of course, you can stuff it with anything you want. But I'm going to do the meat and the rice and the cheese, you know, and the, the tomatoes. I'm going to do kind of like the Mexican rice style and uh you stuff them long ways you cut them long ways you stuff them of course then you roll them in your egg wash your flour your cornstarch and you fry them and oh my goodness are those fantastic so i'm going to do a video on those and uh, i got banana peppers growing out i got four plants and they're just loaded with the banana peppers you just gotta let them get big enough but I'm definitely going to do some of those, and I'm also going to do some of those for the freezer because they will be good. I'm just going to pre-bread them, and I think I'm going to bake them a little bit, you know, maybe halfway through and or halfway cooked. And then, you know, I'm going to freeze them, and then when you take them out, you can thaw them out and then fry them. Oh, my God, I bet they'd be wonderful. I bet they'd be perfect for the freezer. I do a lot of freezer foods. Um, corn isn't in yet. We're getting corn, but it's not, it's not local yet. That won't be till pretty much the end of the, end of the year. I am so tired, friends. End of the month. And, uh, of course, when I freeze my corn, I just freeze it right in, uh, the, I don't, I don't husk it. I don't take the husk off or nothing. I just freeze it, bring it home. I cut off the end and just freeze it. And I do got a video on that, too. You can look through my videos and you'll find that one. Um... I will do a video on all my, because I'm going to be harvesting um, a lot of my herbs. I, right now I'm just in my uh, dehydrator right now. I, all I got is parsley and some sweet basil in there right now. But I got to do, I got to dry a lot more. I've got tons of thyme and English thyme and lemon thyme. And I'm going to dehydrate some of the tarragon I got. All kinds of stuff. I'm going to dehydrate some of the lemon balm because I'm going to give that to... I got something on my glasses. It keeps hitting on my ear. I'm going to give that uh, my lemon, not lemon thyme, my lemon balm. Um, I'm going to dehydrate some of that for tea for my friend because she loves lemon tea. So with that, I've been having fun. And Dave and I had an absolute blast. We were like out in the woods every day. It's like every chance we got, we'd jump in the Jeep and we'd go for a ride through the woods. I did record a little bit of it. And you know what? At the end of this video, I'll edit them little little clips in so that you can see what, you know, what I've been doing. Some of it's sideways. Some of it's forward. Bless his heart. I just love him and Shannon to pieces. Um, somebody said he was a little bit jittery, but you see my friend, he's a miracle. Absolutely. He shouldn't even be walking. He's a functioning quadriplegic. So, you know, every now and then he, he has a little bit of a hard time, but he, he does pretty good. He does pretty good. It's like, how do you explain it? I mean, I shouldn't be telling you because that's his business, but the way it works is he can use his limbs and he can use his legs but he doesn't feel them very well his fingers are numb so try to hold the camera with numb fingers bless his heart he does wonderful so anyway some of it might be sideways some of it might even be upside down flip your computer upside down you'll still enjoy it 
but I'll put those clips at the end of the video give you a little snapshot of what we've been doing some of them are pretty fun and we had a blast absolutely we went out looking for berries but you know they weren't ripe and there was a few of them that were ripe but most of them were still green and I thought my gosh they should have been in by now but this year everything was a little bit late even the asparagus I mean this is from back in May and uh, but I don't think they're gonna get ripe I think they're gonna die out before they ripen because they just didn't look too healthy so anyway we're going to uh, we're gonna do some foraging videos Dave and I together and uh, the next time I do go out there to Lake City by gosh I'll take you with me to that store again that place is fantastic so we're gonna do a little bit of foraging videos because he knows a lot of the edible things you know edible plants and flowers in the woods and I have no clue I would starve to death in the woods because I, I don't know I have no idea what I can eat and what I can't eat really beside of berries and you know the obvious stuff so with that I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna edit a couple of my little videos in here for you and uh, let you see what we what we did and we had fun and not much more to tell you except thank you so much and the story <laughs> the story on the cow tongue that's a rough one I was literally traumatized when I was little I've never forgotten it <laughs> oh my heavens all I'm gonna tell you because it's it's bad all I'm gonna tell you is it involves a pathology laboratory I don't know what that noise is. A pathology laboratory, hospital, doctor, and a young girl that happened to walk in at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's all I got to say. And what was it? Maybe two days after that, my mother was cooking cow tongue. And when she opened up the lid to that pan, I thought I was going to die. She opened up that lid to that pan. And when the steam cleared, all I saw was this thing that looked like the thing I saw in the pathology with no toes that did it for me that was the end of that scarred for life no cow tongue for this lady and he loves to tease me about that it's hilarious but that's all I can tell you on that story we all have that one story where we've been in the wrong place at the wrong time and you never forget it the rest of your life ever Every time I see a cow tongue, never forget it. Bad. Funny now when I look back on it, but still, I can't eat them. So anyway, you all have a wonderful weekend. I just wanted to chit-chat and jib-jab a little bit. You know, no rhyme, no reason. Just give you a little update on things that I've been doing, what's going on. I went off the board. I, I talked about this, that, and the other, and I just jabbered. So... Anyway, friends, you all have a lovely weekend, and I'll see you when we do the walk around. Hey, friends. We're on our way to a secret spot. Well, it's not so secret. There's a car coming. <laughs> we like to think it's secret to get blackberries and raspberries. Look, friends. A pretty little stream that runs right along this this dirt road. Isn't that pretty? We're going down to see a nice little piece of the river. Oh, look at the sumac. Sumac, yeah, that's how it's coming up. It's all through right now. That's edible too, isn't it? That's drinkable. If you put that and soak it like tea, it's going to turn out like uh, pink lemonade, minus the sugar. Put sugar in it. It's a great treat for summertime. You go first, I'll follow you. There might be snakes down there. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta come through some. The blue racers. Blue racers. Oh my goodness, David. That's slick. Okay. Here we go.
This is all woods. It goes right out to the river. Oh, look at how pretty. Oh, wow. That's really nice. That's a nice little spot. Look at that over there. You can hear it. Oh, yeah, it's all rocks tree. out there, too. You can walk as far as Oh, look at that over there. Okay, I'll take my shoes off. Ooh, that is chilly. Chilly, chilly. It's a fresh water. Yeah. Turn the video back on in a minute. It is on. But I was going to say, we'll walk up close to here. Oh, that water is very, very cold. Burr, 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 burr. You leaving yours on? Is it? <laughs> Let me see your face. That's cold. That's cold. That's some cold water. Oh, that'll give you hypothermia, buddy. Is it? I don't think I can get past that cold. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It like is night and day. Oh, except I'm not good with my poor little feet. See my feet, they look like tree stumps. <laughs> my ankles, oh, I can't walk on these stones, Dave. Is that warm? This would be a nice fishing spot. And friends, yes, I love to go fishing. My favorite thing in the world is fly fishing. I haven't been fishing in about 10 years, but I love fishing and I miss it. Oh, this is neat. 